can be uh, easily adopted in our ordinary laboratory environment. And obviously, the surface morphology and the properties of the synthesized material depends on the type of precursors, its concentration, pH of the solution, temperature, growth duration, etc. Sometimes, instead of uh, uh, heating by uh, furnace, uh, we use microwave, microwave heating. Microwave heating uh, allows us to uh, remove some, uh, remove the defects. And in, uh, if we use microwave heating, the defects are quite less. And in this method, we can also prepare thin film, not only uh, in powder form, we can also prepare thin film. So for thin film, what we do, whenever we uh, put the liquid uh, pre aqueous precursors here, we put a substrate over here, say silicon or glass or quartz, uh, 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 slice, we shall put it here and uh, uh, close it and the entire uh, system as is. So the deposition will be over that substrate. So we can grow uh, thin film of nan nanometer also by this hydrothermal methods. Now we shall see some of the representative results reported in uh, the literature. Here you see the scanning electron microscope image of zinc oxide <coughs> nano rods. This is the over <coughs> silicon substrate. This is the nanorods grown for a duration of five hours. You see well-grown nanorods are found with uh, average length about uh, three to 400 nanometer. This is the scale bar. And this scale bar is very important. You know, already I have discussed that uh, unless or until you don't have this scale bar, the, uh, this picture has no meaning because from this scale bar, we can calculate this uh, size of the uh, nanorods. So from this scale bar here, we can uh, see that the size is about uh, uh, 300 to 400 nanometer like that. If the growth duration is increased further, then we see the, the morphology gets changed. The rods gets thinner and thinner. Here you can, uh, you can see also, and it's extended, it's elongated. If you see here in this picture, the growth duration is 15 hours. In that case, the rod lengths are about uh, 5 microns, if this is uh, 1 micron, so I think this is uh, 5 microns, whereas the diameter um, has get thin. So uh, if we increase further, then the diameter reduces and the length increases also. So there are several mechanisms for this group. I'll uh, not be discussing here, but uh, what we uh, see here that this growth duration plays an important role in determining the morphology of the synthesized nanostructures. So not only nano rods, we can also grow varieties of mm, nanostructures. Here you can see here uh, some other zinc oxide hierarchical structures. You see these are assembles of uh, nanorods, flower-like nanorods are there. So varieties of nanostructures can be formed. Here is one example. Here you see uh, a bunch of nanowares, nano pencils are there. That is uh, uh, grown. I'm not saying all, all other results, but you see, uh, uh, these <clears throat> are uh, very fine uh, structures that can be grown by this method. So these are the beauties of this method. But uh, one major uh, disadvantage is that this is a low temperature growth. And from the basic physics of defects, we know that defects uh, are there at low temperature. If the, if the material grows at low temperature, there is a probability of more number of defects. So to remove these defects, we have to uh, any, any, or we have to heat this uh, sample to high temperature so that the uh, defects and faults get reduced. So this is one of the disadvantages. Otherwise, uh, this method is quite cheap uh, to be used in our ordinary uh, physics or chemistry laboratory very easily. So, these are the control parameters I have already discussed that uh, reaction temperature, precursor concentration, presence of any type of surfactants and pH of the solution. These are the control parameters by which we can control the structure of the material. And, and we know in case of uh, nanoscale material, structure and property are interlinked because as the structure gets thinner, the potential well will be re reduced so the energy spectrum of the material will change. So the emission and absorption property of the material will also change. So these are the control parameters by which we can uh, 
modulate the uh, structure into a desired form. Now we shall uh, quickly switch over to quickly uh, switch over to the electrochemical deposition method. So this is also uh, a very simple method. You may have done uh, sometimes uh, in your physics laboratory, class two physics laboratory. So here is the setup that. Uh, so. This is a cell. Basically, you can take a glass beaker, and these are two electrodes. One is a working electrode, and another is counter electrode. That is basically a cathode and anode. And there is a reference electrode, and they are connected to a power supply to maintain a constant current. And here I am showing this is a uh, hot water, but this is uh, always not necessary. Sometimes, if if the chemical reactions be such that much heat is generated, then we have to cool down. Then we have to pass. Cold water through this region, or alternatively, we can place this beaker in a um, uh, ice bath also, so that the temperature will remain maintained. And the precursor, or we say electrolyte, is placed over here in the beaker. Suppose we want to grow zinc oxide over zinc substrate, so we take this electrode as the zinc plate, and this is a uh, reference electrode. Usually, we take saturated calomel and Zinc chloride or zinc acetate solutions. Usually, zinc chloride is used as electrolyte, and the uh, solution is get stirred using a magnetic stirrer. So here is the actual uh, setup I'm uh, showing for a precise control of the system. Here you see this is <coughs> the working electrode. This is the reference electrode. This is the counter electrode. Here and this is. <clears throat> the electrochemical bath and the solutions are there and the entire system i mean the currents voltage etc uh, computer control because uh, control of the current is very important of the system uh, then obviously the structure will change i will show so this is the basic setup for a precise synthesis of nanomaterials by electrochemical method Okay, so now quickly switch over to the uh, structures that have grown. <coughs> so these are um, zinc oxide nanostructure grown over zinc substrate. You see different types of octahedrals, prismic structures, and flower-like structures are formed in this step. And in the second image, you see some two-dimensional flex, like uh, complex-like structures have uh, have been grown. And I will uh, show you over here the effect of time. You see, the this is uh, the growth of zinc oxide nanostructure by electrochemical method, and the temperature was maintained at 70 degrees Celsius, and it was grown on ITO coated glass substrate. You see, initially the uh, growth was this, and if we if we increase the growth duration like 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 300 seconds, you see the morphology of the materials. Changes, and these are the uh, magnified image of the corresponding image. The magnified image of this one is this. So you see the morphology gradually changes on increasing the growth duration. So not only the growth duration, we can also change the pH of the solution. We can also change the temperature of the solution. We can also change the current applied to the electrodes, and the structure will change. Here uh, I have shown uh, the growth of zinc oxide uh, nanostructure in presence of some surfactant, hexamethylene tetramine. So, in the first case, we have used along with the uh, zinc chloride solution, we have used 10 percent hexamine. Hexamine. In uh, here, we have used 30 percent. This is 50 percent. This is 90 percent. So. Uh, So here we see by varying the precursor uh, yeah, uh, surfactant concentration, we can also modulate the structure. Here you see disc-like structures are formed. Now you can see uh, uh, some CD dumbbell-like structures, rod-like structure have been constructed. Okay. So now in uh, this uh, bottom uh, ACM images, we have used KCL, the percentage of KCL. Solution added to this. This is 10 percent, 30 percent, 50 percent, and 90 percent, and you can see a clear change in the morphology of the synthesized patterns are observed. So.
so this da these data are uh, taken from uh, this paper you can also uh, read this paper for a, a detail of the method is there regarding all the precise controls of the parameters now i am showing uh, another result uh, this result is from my group in fact uh, my co, co researchers are there uh, and we have developed a simple electrochemical method for growing this farm like zinc oxide you can see um, the, the structure is farm farm like and each of these disc are hexagonal in shape so actually this uh, data this experiment was done in 2008 okay so what are the control parameters as you have already discussed the control parameters so obviously the concentration of the electrolyte ph of the solution and the type of electrode we are using suppose we are using in the same experiment we use glass substrate and in another another experiment we use quartz substrate in both the uh, in all other conditions remain unchanged in both these two cases by changing the substrate the grown structure will be different because the, the grown structure also depends on the crystallinity of the metal suppose if we use the glass substrate glass is amorphous whereas if we use silicon this is crystalline so uh, depending on the type of uh, crystalline uh, <coughs> crystal uh, yeah, lattice parameters there is a lattice mismatch at the interface that will affect the growth of the nanostructure so uh, the type of electrode is also very important in this case and obviously applied voltage growth duration and growth direction is another important issue we can make the electrode in such a way that the materials may grow in vertical way or it may grow in horizontal way so let us see the effect of growth duration here you see uh, this is the growth of zinc oxide fun like zinc oxide nanostructure vertical uh, like structure this is grown for 5 minutes if the growth duration is 10 minute we see it gets quite thicker and this is for 10 minute 15 minutes growth so we can uh, see as the time increases the <coughs> morphology changes and uh, these results are published in the cover uh, image of this highly renowned journal in the uh, material science having impact factor of 30 it is a material study one of the finest journal in the material science and another and this was published in 2011 and in the next year the second uh, part was also uh, published in the cover image also that is in nano today which has a, which has a very high impact of 20 almost and now you may be wondering and this was the actual experimental setup so we have used a very simple experimental setup to grow uh, these two structures so uh, let us discuss about set uh, this setup so that you can also uh, do this in your uh, home also so we have uh, taken a petri dish and surrounding this you see this uh, blackish region this is basically a zinc strip zinc strip is given and this we are using a uh, pencil ordinary pencil and uh, its uh, graphite acts as one electrode and this zinc as another electrode and we put zinc chloride solution and we connect this zinc uh, plate and this graphite electrode to a current source you can also use uh, for the for trial you can use battery and if we wait for some time you see these structures are generated and these are actually the acm scanning electron microscope image of this structure at the time Uh, we do not have high resolution camera because this was in uh, 2008 so image is not uh, clear but uh, i think uh, this image is fine to understand that very easily easily we can grow this structure and the aim of this lecture to gives the undergraduate students mostly or graduate students to have a flavor of the technology so that and the methods so that they can also grow some uh, structures of their own interest in their home also or in their laboratory so this is the most simplest electrochemical setup that we have done in our laboratory and we have got uh, these results so now we shall go to the third method which is known as spin coating or spin casting so spin coating or spin casting is a very popular technique in semiconductor industries Uh, semiconductor industries in uh, preparing 
thin film of materials so it is a very simple method and uh, uh, commonly used to prepare uh, thin film over any kind of substrate we can use uh, crystalline semiconductors like uh, silicon so you can use glass you can use uh, quartz etc and in the uh, in this method we usually use a solution and to spread it over the substrate by speeding so let us see uh, the schematic of the diagram that will be uh, very clear uh, first discuss about the setup if uh, if someone's microphone is on then uh, please uh, mute it so here is the actual uh, setup equipment for the spin coating i am uh, showing this portion over here here you see this is basically a small table like structure like uh, a 1 rupee coin size round table and a narrow hole is there in between and the substrate on which we have we want to grow the film is put over here and this narrow line is connected uh, by pipe through or tube through this vacuum pump so when the vacuum pump is on it will evacuate the air in between this region and the outer side is open to atmosphere so in outer side region we have a very high pressure and here we have a low pressure so this substrate is stuck with the table and, and uh, that's why you are using vacuum because uh, we can also use uh, uh, the tape simple tape but uh, as uh, the spinning uh, rate will be very high 2000 uh, 2000 to 3000 revolution per minute that is very high so then a huge centrifugal force will be generated you know, so that the substrate will be skipped off over here that's why you have you use this vacuum technique to stick this substrate over here so this is the setup you see this one and all the things are uh, controlled here you see this is the table and this is the substrate this uh, as color is the substrate and we uh, put some liquid drop over here liquid drop means suppose we want to grow say zinc oxide so we have precursor uh, zinc acetate solution to grow the seeds and we put the um, solution drop by drop uh, the solution is sometimes termed as ink in uh, uh, in this uh, spin coating technique we uh, say this is called ink this uh, solution sometimes called ink so we put this ink over this substrate and we spin this with a very high speed so as we increase the speed a huge centrifugal force will be generated and along with there is another force is surface tension so under the combined effect of this surface tension force and the centrifugal force this liquid will spread over this substrate now on hitting the surface the uh, the solvents will be removed so only the seeds nanoparticle will be remain on this substrate suppose we have uh, ethanolic solution of zinc oxide uh, zinc acetate so zinc oxide seeds are already formed now we have done this spin coating and if we um, now do the spin coating after that if we allow the substrate to evaporate then the ethanol will be evaporated ethanol molecules will be evaporated only the zinc oxide seeds will be there so we have to heat this substrate to grow further if we can heat the sample so that the materials may grow further and the growth of the material here growth i mean growth uh, in a sense growth crystallinity and morphology this depends on the spinning speed spinning duration concentration and viscosity of the liquid and volatile nature of the solvent what type of solvent we are taking if you if we take water it will not be easily evaporated we have to mm, put some uh, light or heating uh, so so that it will be evaporated uh, or if we use uh, methanol then in ordinary atmosphere it, it will be easily evaporated so this volatility of the solvent is also an important issue and uh, the spinning duration is usually uh, taken as one to two minutes whereas the spinning period, spinning speed uh, lies in the range from few hundreds to few thousand revolution per minute so um as it is clear from the physics of the experiment that if we increase the thickness 
the center if we increase the uh, revolution revolution of spinning obviously centrifugal force will be high so uh, the film will be spread and the thickness will be small and the thickness of the material is inversely proportional to the square root of the uh, revolution frequency and here i am going to uh, show you one video uh, i will show you one video that will uh, clearly demonstrate uh, this uh, experiment okay uh, let's uh, see the video just wait for sometimes i'm just sharing this one Okay, is the video visible? Can you see the video? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's start. Just wait for a moment. Uh, some technical problem is there. I resolve it shortly. Okay. Okay, is the video visible now? Yes, sir. Okay, so you see this is the setup, the experimental uh, setup of the uh, spin coater, and this is automated, fully automated system, you know, so that we can uh, precisely set the uh, time of uh, coating, uh, coating speed, number of coatings, because we can uh, coat multiple layer, two layer, three layer, four layer, ten layers, etc. Everything we can set, and this is the vacuum pump. And this uh, video will demonstrate. I will just uh, skipping this part. You see, uh, from this panel, we can set the uh, different parameters that, uh, like number, uh, how many revolutions will be there, how uh, how many numbers of coatings will be there. And now you see, I will show you step by step. Okay, so this is the platform actually. So this is the round table over which we will put the substrate. You see over here, the substrate is given here, and this is the narrow hole. Which is connected through a tube to the vacuum pump. Here it will be shown the vacuum pump. Once this vacuum pump is on, due to this uh, vacuum creation, this substrate is tipped in this region so that it will it will not be skipped off during the high revolution. Now you see the entire uh, thing is uh, covered, and now we will put the ink or the solution. Or the seed solution over the substrate. You see, this is the solution. We are taking a droppers over here, and we putting the uh, solution over the substrate here, drop by drop. And now we shall uh, uh, start the uh, system so that the substrate will uh, starts rotating. Okay, it will. Uh, so you see, the substrate is rotating. And due to the centrifugal force and the surface tension, uh, this uh, due and due to this rotation, the entire seeds will be spread over the substrate, and as a result, the mm, thin film will be formed. This is a very popular technique in this is a very popular technique in synthesizing. any kind of uh, thin film in semiconductor in industries and organic electronic in industries so okay now uh, let's uh, go back uh, to 
bar issues. Now you can see this is the ACA, ACA image of the uh, spin coated zinc oxide. You see there, uh, there are multiple layer. Has, this is a cross section view actually. Different multiple layer has been grown. This one, two, three, four, five, six. Multiple layer has been grown by this method. So we can say that we can grow th thin film of different thickness. If we uh, increase the number of coatings, the film uh, thickness will increase. So not only thin film, we can also grow the thick film. Uh, so this is a, a very uh, simple technique to grow thin as well as the thick film of any kind of material. So these are uh, some other structure. These are the SMEs of the nanoparticles form over the substrate. And these are uh, actually the SMEs of the samples when after annealing. So you can see the surface structure, which is embedded with a large number of uh, uh, nanoparticles there. This is another case, as you can see, very fine. This is if the scale bar is 30 nanometer. I think these particles are 10, uh, 50 nanometers are there. So only few layers of nanoparticles are created over this substrate. And I have given all the links of these images so that you can uh, search this link and you can access this entire uh, paper where the details of the experiments are discussed. This is another result uh, from this journal. So now we can go another method, which is known as the spray pyrolysis. So what is spray pyrolysis? This is also a simple method of synthesizing uh, thin film of semi, uh, semiconductors or any other kind of organic film, this method. So spray pyrolysis, as the name suggests, we have to spray the material. So here is the setup, let's see. Suppose this is the substrate over which we can, uh, we want to uh, grow the material, okay? So this is our substrate. It is uh, placed over a uh, flat uh, table. Uh, table in the sense, this is a platform which can be heated. And we have an automizer control jet. And here we have a connection over here so that uh, the solution are kept in this automizer jet. And here is a spraying nozzle. We can control automatically so that uh, this uh, nozzle will uh, spray the solution over the substrate. And as a result, spray droplets will be uh, formed over the substrate. And on heating the substrate, we can fabricate the film. So this is a very simple method of uh, synthesizing uh, this structure. And now, now I will show a video of this uh, uh, spray pyrolysis technique, which will clearly demonstrate this one. Okay, uh, let's see the video. Uh, the, that will be very clear. That will give you the clear idea of the setup. Okay. So, this is the spray pyrolysis equipment I'm uh, showing. Okay, so. This is the equipment, this is the uh, growth chamber and the bottom part is uh, consisting of the power supply and other accessories. Okay, I'm just skipping this one. These are several controlling uh, uh, lines by which you can control. You can also uh, put some inert gases within this chamber also that will influence the growth. Here you see. Sir, video is not showing. Video is not swing. Video is not swing. Yes, sir. Now? Sir, only you. No video? No video, sir. Okay, okay, let's see. Just wait, just wait for a moment. I think there is a problem with the sharing. Now, is it swing? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is the setup. This upper part is the growth chamber and the lower, lower part is the control chamber. Okay. 
in this uh, control chamber means we have to use power supply flow of control gases etc these all automations are there in the lower chamber and in this chamber we will have uh, the growth now we shall uh, see uh, the these are uh, the gas flow controls over here here you see this is the thing this is the automated nozzle through which the liquids will be spread and this is our uh, substrate this is a large substrate we have used and this is uh, the setup by which we can heat this substrate now we can control several parameters like how many numbers of coatings will be there uh, what should be the droplet size etc this can be controlled over here so these parameters are getting set up so once the parameters are set up then the nozzle is, will be allowed to spray the liquid it will start soon within uh, few seconds 5 10 seconds you see now you see this uh, system will start spraying this is uh, uh, controlling the parameters Okay, you see. Now it will start spraying. Okay, you see the nozzle is spraying and moving over the entire substrate, so that the seeds are formed over the substrate. So the picture clearly indicates that you can grow a large size film using this pyrolysis method. This is also a very common method of synthesizing of uh, preparing thin film, especially for. organ in used in organic electronics where we need a very large film like uh, when I, whenever we want to devise any kind of display like your uh, ccd display or quantum dot tv display this is a very large size screen uh, that can be uh, fabricated thin film can be fabricated by this pyrolysis method and obviously there are uh, post fabric post uh, deposition processing those are there but uh, this is used for large scale fabrication and this uh, this is uh, this is from the hallmark one of the famous industry in optics so now i am showing uh, here one image uh, let's see i'll share just wait for a moment okay this is the acm image of zinc oxide nanoparticle <coughs> grown over substrate and after uh, growth they are annealed at different angling temperature 400 600 800 degrees celsius etc you can see fine nanoparticles have been formed and you can see the size of the nanoparticles is about uh, i see these are few microns 1 to 2 microns like that so these are basically hierarchical three dimensional uh, nanoparticles Uh, so the thin film is composed of these nanoparticles and we can use for different types of purposes so <coughs> these are mostly mostly the solution phase techniques that are being used in uh, growing uh, in growing nanostructure by chemical methods so after growing these nanostructure uh, these are chemical methods so now we, i shall quickly switch over to some vapor phase method because as i have already discussed that vapor phase method methods are mostly used for uh, fabricating various kinds of devices because in vapor phase method the quality of the film is very high and the defects are very less so okay uh, let's see what are the vapor phase method of growing these materials so um, let's wait for a moment Is the screen visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. So these are the uh, various vapor phase growth. So these are uh, these are basically <coughs> bottom up technique. So vapor phase method include evaporation. There may be physical evaporation or chemical evaporation. These are the physical evaporation techniques, and this is chemical evaporation technique. That is chemical vapor deposition, sputtering, 
pulse laser equation i have already discussed there are another two method vapor liquid solid method and also the molecular beam epitaxy yeah. so out of these methods i shall uh, quickly try to explain two three methods over here so let us first uh, start with the physical vapor deposition system and one of the finest example is the thermal evaporation as the name suggests we have to thermally evaporate the material that will be deposited in the form of thin film so the melting point of the material to be deposited is an important issue in this thermal evaporation process and also the supply of heat the form of supply of heat is very essential so here is the schematic setup here you see we have a small filament kind of structure which is known as a resistance like structures and within this there is a ceramic board in which we can put the powder suppose we want to grow zinc oxide thin film so we put zinc oxide powders over here and we supply a very high current into this coil so due to this high heat this zinc powders will be evaporated and a substrate it is fixed over here on the top of the uh, source so these um, uh, atoms will now be deposited over this substrate so as you can see if we change this substrate distance if we change this substrate distance obviously the structure will be modified because i have uh, why this uh, i have already discussed in uh, during pulse laser deposition if we uh, uh, the substrate is uh, placed at large distance the growth will be uniform and this entire system is kept in a vacuum chamber so this is the actual accessories this is the vacuum chamber we have to first evacuate the setup because if there are some unwanted air molecules there will be scattering collisions etc so the growth will be disturbed so usually it is made vacuum high vacuum uh, at 10 to the pressure is very low so 10 to the -6 um, order uh, we have to use some diffusion pump so this is the schematic setup of thermal evaporation technique and this is the uh, actual standardized setup of this so we have all kinds of controls over there controls over current voltage and the uh, uh, pressures uh, sample uh, uh, yeah, sample target distance can also be changed uh, from this panel also and these are some of the structures that have grown this is zinc sulfide uh, structures grown over uh, silicon substrate you can see mm, uh, some rod like structures with uh, mm, some sub spikes are observed in this method so mm, this thermal evaporation method is also another technique of growing high quality film now another method method of growing is known as the electron beam evaporation as you have already mentioned that the name suggests from the type of evaporation because as we have uh, discussed about uh, thermal evaporation the material is evaporated thermally we are passing heat and we are evaporating the material but the evaporation process can also be done using the electron beam that is what is known as electron beam evaporation okay so what is electron beam evaporation in case of electron beam evaporation the material is evaporated using an electron beam an electron beam is allowed to incident on the material and the material get evaporated and deposited over the sample you see this is the, the the similar kind of structure and obviously the entire system must be done in a vacuum so here is the container which contains the element to be uh, evaporated here is an electron gun and we apply magnetic field so that the uh, electron beams uh, get circulated and focused on this uh, uh, container and once the high energy electron beam is incident on this material the materials get evaporated and deposited over the substrate and due to this high energy electron gun the materials get uh, heated very uh, quickly it's it's uh, get heated quickly so 
there are some arrangements of passing cooled water through the crucible so that this uh, crucible doesn't uh, get uh, heated and uh, disturb the apparatus so as you have already mentioned then this distance is very important in uh, fabricating the film thick uh, in uh, controlling the film thickness so here is this crystal thickness monitor what is that this is nothing but um, another electron beam so this electron beam will incident on this substrate and actually this is over this side and this electron diffraction happens and from this electron diffraction pattern we can observe you know, the thickness of the uh, film that how much thickness have been grown uh, we can uh, monitor in situ during growth so here is the actual setup you can see this is the actual setup and we have all kinds of controls over there so this is a very costly setup and its maintenance is uh, quite difficult that's why uh, earlier we said uh, that the chemical uh, chemical synthesis method hall gel method uh, electrochemical method hydrothermal method these are very simple and cost effective so these are uh, some of the structures fabricated using this method you can uh, find the details in this paper and here uh, the angle of the beam also plays an important role in the evaporation process also because uh, if we change the angle and the target to substrate angle is fixed then the uh, density of the evaporation evaporated plume of the material will be different that will directly affect the morphology of the structure so the angle is very important now we shall see some other structure nano plates like structure that have grown by electrochemical methods also now we'll discuss about uh, briefly discuss about another method which is known as the chemical vapor deposition method this is also a bottom up process of growing high quality thin film and usually uh, several kinds of devices are uh, fabricated thin film devices are fabricated using this method this chemical vapor deposition uh, uh, shortly it is uh, represented as cvd and uh, you know the synthetic diamonds are produced by this method this is a popular method of producing uh, synthetic diamonds so what is chemical vapor deposition process in this chemical vapor, vapor deposition process the precursors are taken i must show over here the precursors taken uh, are taken in vapor form and they are passed through a high temperature furnace in a reaction tube and at high temperature this reaction occurs in gaseous phase where in earlier cases we have shown that the reaction occurs in liquid phase now the reaction will occurs in vacuum in gaseous phase and we also require some flow of carrier gas like argon etc different types of uh, inert gas sometimes oxygen and hydrogen are also allowed to pass through this chamber and obviously through a controlled way so by controlling this gas flow and concentration flow rate etc the structure of the materials can be varied so you can see here this is the ac image of zinc oxide nanostructure grown on silicon substrate by chemical vapor deposition process chemical vapor deposition process and you see different kinds of morphologies have been formed by changing uh, changing the process conditions here is another kinds of uh, growth you can see this is a cvd process and uh, these are uh, basically finely grown it will be grown again for growing nano wires you can see the dimension is quite small so these are uh, Uh, due to lack of time because i have to discuss about also the characterization process so i will uh, leave the processes over here although there are some other processes like vapor liquid solid processes and details of this cvd process sputtering and electron beam uh, evaporation if time permits then at the end of the lecture 5 i will possibly discuss about those methods also because those methods are also very important in uh fabricating uh, various kind in fabricating various kinds of nanostructures so um, these are mostly commonly available methods 
used in synthesizing nanostructure and one thing i must mention over here that in this vapor phase growth of uh, nanomaterial you see the major, major control factors are temperature pressure inside the chamber and flow of the carrier gas and type of the carrier gas i mean what type of gas we uh, shall put in the chamber it may be argon gas it may be oxygen gas it may be hydrogen gas what type of gas we should put over there that is also an important issue so maintenance of these conditions are really very difficult suppose if we, we if we are growing uh, these methods at very high temperature around 1200 to 1400 degrees celsius and if you are passing hydrogen and slowly passing hydrogen and oxygen through this reaction tube so these gases uh, are highly you know, flammable and passing through uh, this high temperature so obviously there is a risk so precautions are very essential so precise control of every parameters in these vapor phases are really very important for successful successful growth of the nanostructures so these are uh, some of the processes by which we can uh, grow these nanostructures and uh, these are the results i have already been discussed so um, so if you have any uh, questions i'll be happy to address all those questions you can type this in your uh, youtube uh, youtube chat box also or you can type in the uh, live zoom chat box also but before that i will take three uh, questions i have already got from the uh, last lecture although there are several questions in the last lectures and those will be addressed in the subsequent lectures that I, that's why i have not uh, uh, taken those Uh, but these three questions i think i should be addressed the first one is uh, please add some advantages and disadvantages and applications of each method of synthesizing the the nanostructures so frankly speaking each methods have advantages and disadvantages suppose if we grow the material by a solution phase method like solvel method or wet chemical method etc obviously the reaction occurs at very low temperature that is one adv advantage and uh, solution phase method the accessories are not so high not so costly so the the uh, this is those are very uh, low cost apparatus so those are the advantages but one disadvantage is that since uh, those are grown at low temperature the possibility of defects are there i must discuss one ex example over there if we grow zinc oxide by Uh, this uh, cvd process then that thin film is highly crystalline and almost defect free and as you know that zinc oxide has a band gap of 3.37 or 3.4 electron volt and if we convert it into energy to the wavelength lies in the uv region so that type of zinc oxide will emit uv uv light whereas if you grow the same uh, zinc oxide using this chemical method lots of defects are there within the crystal and these defects have energies that are lies in between conduction band and valence band so the energy gap it is reduced so the emission will now be shifted towards the higher wavelength okay so that type uh, the zinc oxide grown by chemical method will show photoluminescence or emissions in the visible region okay so uh, if we if we use uh, uv uh, uv if you need uh, uv emission then obviously you have to go for this thermal processes or mm, uh, this uh, vapor processes similarly the advantages of these vapor phase methods are obviously that they produce high quality thin film but these are disadvantages are that we have to precisely control various parameters i mean the as you have already discussed pressure temperature uh, concentration carrier gas flow etc that needs to be precisely controlled otherwise your uh, 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 sample will not so repeatable structure okay and moreover again and again i must mention this method these uh, vapor phase methods are highly cost effective suppose pulse laser deposition hmm. pulse laser deposition electron beam evaporation 
etc these are and thermal these are very costly the cost of each equipments mostly lies more than uh, seven eight lakhs and not only that there are maintenance costs like uh, you have to maintain this pressure you have to flow this gas so these uh, recurring costs are also very high so these are one of the disadvantage i uh, actually i'm not uh, willing to say these are disadvantages because the advantages are large the second question is in collision process like ball milling pld etc due to collision there will be uh, additional heat production and obviously this heat affect the growth of the material suppose if you consider the ball milling during uh, the collision the particles are broken and broken so there are large number of defects and dislocations are created and as during the collision the heat is generated that that dislocations and defects moves to the surfaces and crystal growth occurs so that ultimately the defects becomes lesser and lesser that will one inherent advantage of the heat production during the process also and obviously uh, the produced heat will increase the particle size in that case we have to uh, control the growth by uh, reducing the growth duration okay how can the technology of nano science be applied in the field of astronomy astrophysics space science and uh, cosmology okay mm. this uh, not not the application of nano science you can say the application of material science in case of you see uh, if if we want to study the space science uh, we have to collect the space when suppose we collect the sample from space okay from say mars and we have to analyze the sample through different characterization techniques the what are the sample types what are the compositions i will uh, discuss in the next lecture hmm. what are the composition types etc that are very useful in uh, studying the types of materials over there in that planets that will also helps us in uh, studying the origin of those planets etc and one more example i must mention that this is what is uh, schematic uh, called uh, the space elevator so what is space elevator let us discuss a uh, space elevator is a kind of uh, frictional concept right now because this is uh, yet not realized suppose you have a satellite over here okay you stationary satellite which is fixed over your head at a certain height and this is your uh, base station and you can connect your base station by some fiber okay not optical fiber some kind of fiber or sometimes some kind of rope for the timing say some rope or thread and if you want to send any kind of device you can mm, send it through this way okay so this is the concept of the space elevator and scientists are trying to developing this space elevator so this thread or this connection should be very flexible so that it cannot be stressed out so scientists are developing carbon nanotube based uh, uh, best uh, structures best uh, uh, tubes like the structure that are very flexible and that can uh, bear with this type of strain produced so however this is uh, not yet practically realized these are all uh, in the under uh, laboratory study also uh, these are not practically realized yet the fourth question is easier time friendly and economic side methodologies of making nanoparticles and obviously the solution phase methods are more time friendly and economic but economic uh, is not always the first criteria of fabricating material because if you uh, think uh, you if you some of you have idea you can uh, purchase these leds in few one uh, say 1 rupees 2 rupees per piece led lamps can you think of uh, this uh, uh, small uh, bulb or if you think of this uh, uh, this bulb so a scooter bulb if you say in your uh, bikes etc that's cost uh, cost around uh, 100 rupees the filament bulb and now these leds are 1 uh, to 2 rupees okay but the fabrication technology they use that is the evaporation process those are very costly then why the cost of the um, product is very low because 
the batch processing is very high because uh, they produce a large number of leds at a time in a uh, chemical vapor deposition setup or any kind of uh, uh, setup the leds are produced few lakhs of leds are produced at a time few lakhs of transistor are produced at a time few lakhs of fats are produced at a time so that the overall production cost is reduced although the equipments are costly the overall production cost is reduced so always the uh, economic uh, uh, side doesn't mean that the method would be low cost we have uh, to also uh, to be concerned about the production yield obviously and one thing i must mention i will be discussed in lecture 5 and 6 regarding the environmental friendly nature of the nanoparticles the nanoparticles produced by the chemical methods are usually toxic in nature okay so when after use of these nanoparticles they are released into the environment they produce toxic effect whereas the nanoparticles produced by these vapor phase methods are non toxic okay so that does not produ um, produce any kind of toxic effect in this regard obviously there are some other issues because in uh, any electronic devices we use leads etc those are sometimes toxic otherwise the materials by um, most of them are non toxic so that is the main advantage of this method so okay let's uh, check the uh, chat box what are the questions there okay let me check Mm -hmm. oh in uh, cvd method uh, the numbers that um, the numbers actually the codes for uh, those samples you can also search the, that paper you can uh, find there so uh, it doesn't it uh, not would be for these numbers also okay and uh, Okay, let me check. What is counter electrode in electrode deposition method? Because you see, uh, uh, simply speaking, you have uh, one cathode and one anode. Those are those are the two electrodes. One uh, electrode is taken as the growth uh, growth electrode, and the other one we say that this is counter electrode. Nothing else. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Any more questions? Uh, yes sir i have a few questions okay uh, sir <clears throat> hmm. in the hydrothermal method uh, you said about autoclaves ha uh, autoclaves ha uh, yes sir in autoclaves um, pressure maintenance is also necessary is not uh, it uh, no in autoclave pressure is not maintained because uh, this is uh, entire uh, chamber the pressure is changing over there okay but uh, as the uh, portion of the air is very small within that okay it is almost air tight and the uh, you see if you can remember that teflon uh, tube is fully filled so that no air is there so that there uh, is not much variation in pressure obviously there is a change in pressure because we are heating this but uh, the temperature is, uh, that's why it is a low temperature growth that is 100 to 200 uh, degrees celsius so that uh, pressure doesn't affect okay sir okay. sir uh, my next question is in electrochemical using electrochemical method you showed ah. some uh, some images same images of zinc oxide nano materials yeah Um, my question is if uh, we can use other methods of synthesizing zinc oxide nanomaterials can we get many many different structures obviously the uh, structure also depend uh, depends on the methods methods and uh, the parameters ha yeah, parameters obviously always there but the morphology i mean the structure whether it will be rod shaped or it will be cube shaped these are also method dependent okay and obviously yeah. you can control the material because, because if you uh, say that i want to grow fern like zinc oxide nano structure by chemical method that is not possible because, oh <laughs> uh, we are using the electrode 
and electrode has uh, basically metallic electrode so it has some uh, interlayer structures crystal structures over there and the growth is uh, controlled by the electrochemical potential that plays an impact important role in growing these structures that also changes uh, uh, the gives p energy of the system which in turn finally control the uh, structure so that's why this uh, growth structures are not only the control parameter dependence but al also the method dependence yes sir my next question is in spray pyrolysis okay you showed a video in that video uh, we saw that um, from an atomizer mm -hmm. atomizer was spraying on a substrate but yes. the substrate was kept on a heating surface uh, actually so why uh, here see, the, uh, because uh, uh, whatever the, the spray sprayer so what we are spraying it is zinc acetate suppose if we want to grow zinc oxide film it mm -hmm. is zinc acetate dissolved in methanol okay so yes. we have um, uh, and this is a uh, basically the solution is uh, uh, zinc acetate solution with some zinc oxide seeds so when it is spread along with the zinc acetate seeds uh, the methanols are also there so we yes. have to heat the substrate so that these solvents will evaporate and we can quickly deposit Okay, and obviously we have to take precautions while we are taking uh, this volatile material. But that temperature should not be very high because if we use methanol, if we go beyond 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, then it will fire up. So control of temperature is also very important in the process. Yes, sir. Sir, my last question is why carbon nanotube may be so long? Yeah, is it due to its catenation property or not? Uh, repeat your question sir you said in the last portion that hmm. carbon nanotube may be very very long or uh, rod like structure of carbon so my question is uh, is it that's a, that actually the, uh, uh, carbon carbon bonding is uh, uh, making carbon carbon bond to a large extent making the chain is quite easier that's why uh, these organics are favored. Okay, that's why you can uh, prepare a very long carbon nanotube, but not long inorganic tubes like a non -inor inorganic material. Like if we cannot uh, fabricate, uh, say, few millimeters of this zinc oxide rods like structure, yes, yes, but sir, yes, we can easily uh, prepare few kilometers of carbon nanotube. Okay, that is because of the uh, chaining property, uh, I mean, uh, the bonding uh, of the carbon carbon uh, that are readily uh, uh, in activity also uh, so that <clears throat> we can prepare a long chain yes, i think sir. i'll uh, focus on the fifth lecture uh, while i'll discuss about various kind of carbon nanostructures because carbon nanostructures are also important in modern electronics that i have skipped since the first lecture uh, that will be discussed in probably fifth lecture there i will uh, discuss it in detail okay Okay, sir. Is there a soil gel method in the next lecture? Mm, soil gel method? As I have uh, actually, I have discussed a uh, chemical method. That's a solution phase. That's why I, I am skipping uh, this part right now. I'll uh, go to the characterization part first. And if time permits, then I'll discuss the soil gel again. Okay. Because okay. soil gel is similar like that uh, chemical method that I, have, that I have discussed. So, if time permits, only then I will uh, move for soil gel. Otherwise, <clears throat> I'll go for first. I'll go for characterization because those are also most important. So, whatever methods we are using, we are saying we have fabricated this one, we have fabricated this one. Whether that that has been really uh, created or not, we have uh, we, we are saying that by this method we have uh, prepared gold nanoparticle. Whether the <clears throat> final product is gold or anything else, that we have to study first. Okay. So, I'll quickly go through the characterization part in the next lecture. Then if time permits, obviously I will discuss not only soil gel, the electron beam, yeah, the uh, VLS method and uh, the most popular <coughs> and most costly, the molecular beam ejection method also. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Bidesh, uh, I will answer your questions in, I think, in next lecture while discussing the optical properties of material. I will discuss in detail the surface plasmon. And the band gap, uh, uh, band gaps of the material. There we will find the answer: the size-dependent color emission from the nanoparticles.
Okay. So, okay, okay, okay. So, any other questions? So, is there any questions? So, okay, if you don't have uh, uh, any questions, uh, then <clears throat> today is up to this, and uh, from uh, next day, I shall discuss about the characterization part that is mostly morphological and structural study of nanoparticles. Whatever the AC image I am showing, this is rod like structure, this is spherical in shape, okay, and this is. <coughs> Uh, this is uh, say a tubular shape. How these images are seen? Because these are very small, few nanometers. We cannot see even in optical microscope. So how this material can be seen in this electron microscope? That the constructions and the basic uh, uh, working principle will be discussed in the next lecture. I will mainly focus on the scanning electron microscope, transmission electron microscope, and structural characterization include uh, X-ray diffraction. And then I shall quickly switch over to the optical properties of the material. And then we shall discuss about the environmental aspects of these nanoparticles. When the nanoparticles enter into the environment, what happens? So one uh, small announcement is that the feedback form will be uh, distributed uh, by uh, 10 p.m. Uh, 10 a.m. And you have to submit it uh, by uh, 2 p.m. Uh, don't uh, get hurry, it will be distributed to your email and the WhatsApp by uh, 15 minutes. So the next next lecture will be as it is uh, on the Sunday uh, at 8.30 a.m. sub. And so thank you very much. So this is an initiative of the Department of Physics, Prabhat Kumar College Kontai for spreading general, general education to our students in this corona pandemic stack situation. And uh, I must thank uh, uh, Arjun Patro Department of Physics, uh, Department of Botany, PK College Kontai, for um, regarding uh, this Zoom and YouTube live streaming and solving all other technical issues. So thank you very much uh, and stay home, stay safe. So see you in the next lecture. Thank you.